And with that, we will move on to 9D, Madam Clerk. Please call that item. Review and potentially adopt a resolution resending the order of requiring the wearing of face coverings indoors in the city of Vallejo. All right, we'll start the public sign up clock going at this time while we have a presentation, Mr. Malone. There is no uh, slide deck to present, Mayor. I'm just going to speak on this for just a couple seconds here. So, right. as you know, uh, last week, February 16th, the state rescinded their requirement for mass use indoors for vaccinated individuals. It still requires those that are unvaccinated to mask up. So the item before you tonight is to either extend or continue the mandate that we have for the city for indoor spaces or to rescind that um, mandate and discontinue requiring masks be worn in indoor spaces. Um, and we know that if we follow the guidelines strictly by the state, we don't really have a mechanism to uh, determine if someone's been vaccinated or not. So beginning our for next council meeting and subsequent um, legislative bodies, if you rescind order, there will be no mass requirement uh, indoors um, with, for the city. Uh, just a clarification, <clears throat> if we rescind the order and we go back to public meetings with our next one on March 8th, will the city be requesting proof of vaccination upon entrance to the council chamber? That item is not before you to consider, and we have not indicated or planned to to bring that forward to council and this council is requesting us to do so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, if I may. So yeah. the, the, the state's order um, would require unvaccinated persons to wear masks while indoors. Um, certainly right now we do not have a mechanism for checking vaccination records at the door, um, nor uh, what, and I think Mike indicated this, uh, the city manager indicated this, no um, plan that we're bringing forward to you to do so. If the council were to request uh, such a plan or such uh, confirmation, I think administratively we would have to figure out a way, um, the city manager would have to figure out a way to staff up to do so or to require people to um, participate in one of the electronic programs such as CLEAR um, to verify vaccination status. But, um, but right now we don't have a mechanism to do that or personnel stacked up at the door to check cards. Um, and even if we did have personnel to stack up at the door or use CLEAR, once people are inside um, and sitting down, I think, um, they are pretty much on the honor system to leave their masks on if they are an unvaccinated person. Okay, and that would extend to uh, council members seated on the dais when they weren't speaking as well? So council members, if they are vaccinated under the state's mandate, would not need to be masked. And um, if they are unvaccinated, they would need to remain masked, speaking or not. Okay. I think that pretty well clarifies everything. Are there any questions or comments from council members before we proceed to public comment? No? All right. Uh, I'll close the public comment time on this item. Do we have any speakers? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, we have two speakers. Okay, let's call them both in order. They'll give them each three minutes. Kathleen Dyhep, go ahead. Mayor and council, I think I'd like you to consider this nuance of unvaccinated and other jurisdictions to address the same safety concerns and the same health issues that this item is addressing have required their staff to be vaccinated. At a minimum, you're gonna to have to require knowing who of your staff are vaccinated so that their manager can require them to, if they're not vaccinated, to wear a mask. But I think you sure staff should be vaccinated. I think that if I have an encounter with a police officer, if I have to 
deal with code enforcement. I don't really have a choice in that matter. And that public servant should be taking all health precautions. Before you say, I think you could, as counsel, tell your staff you'd like them to come back with a mandatory mask, a mandatory action for your staff to be vaccinated. Other cities have done this. San Francisco, also a charter city, also a city with strong union contracts, probably more than you have, has done this. You could probably find exactly the legal language and copy it from them. At a minimum, if people go out sick, we're that much more understaffed. You're paying for the sick time. I saw coverage in the paper of earlier this year, 60 some staff at the city have been vaccinated. I would hope that the folks working for the city, I would hope that the seven of you would be vaccinated so that when you're out talking to the people being in the city, you're helping, helping us all. Just like we're not spreading polio or smallpox or measles. I fundamentally think if you're if you don't tell your count your staff tonight that you'd like them to bring this issue for you, they're probably not going to do it. Or and or you're going to hear concerns about your unions. There's clearly ways to do it. Other cities have done it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diane. Of course, I do note that there is a bill to require employers to mandate vaccinations before the state legislature, and then they will probably have a decision on that before long. Uh, let me call our second speaker, please. Robert Brecky, go ahead. Mr. Brecky. Uh, uh, yes, I, I think that um, what's really important here is the safety of all. And um, I think that uh, though not none of us are big fans of wearing a mask, um, I think that we owe it to our fellow citizens and fellow human beings to be safe and to be extra cautious. Um, and I think that in that spirit, and since you cannot abide by coming up with a plan to um, check everyone's card or, or whatever, then you should keep the mask mandate in place until such time that you can accommodate those things. You also should think about maybe a space between seat and seatings in the council chamber. I think it's very important that we're back in the council chamber to speak our minds and to uh, uh, <clears throat> share with the public uh, our concerns. And I think that um, all of us should take the responsibility of wearing a mask and keeping everyone safe um, in these times. And especially we should take consideration that our police who are well, well under um, as public safety officers and so few of them vaccinated, I think that is just a travesty. Um, anyway, that's it. Thank you, Ms. Brankie. Of course, there's nothing in this that will not allow anyone to self-mask if they so choose. All right, that concludes the public speakers on this. Are there any further comments or questions, observations from council members? If not, we can go to a vote. Uh, council member Gloria Diaz. Yes, um, I, I'd like to do an alternate motion. Um, I'm in favor of removing the masks, and I know that a lot of people are not going to agree with me, but I think that it's time that we start moving in, in a different direction. I mean, we've had the mask mandate for six months. The state um, is is removing the mandate. Um, our numbers are decreasing. The county has, has agreed with the state. It's, uh, it's something difficult to enforce. But what I would like to see is an extension of 30 days, per se, so that we can get the item of the vac vaccination verification um, on the agenda so that we can you know, work something out so that we're able to um, to review who, who's vaccinated and who's not. But I'm, I'm at a point right now that I, I realize that we have to keep everyone safe. But I also want to say that there's, you know, the, the people that are going to be vaccinated that want to be vaccinated, they have already done so. And the ones that have not done so are more than likely not going to do it unless, you know, it's required by their job or, or X, you know, other case. 
Um, so I, I would like to see um, us move in the direction of of being responsible and utilizing the mask if we're not vaccinated. And um, oops, you just froze again. <laughs> and protecting those around us, but I also um, on the other end. And um, like I said, I, I wouldn't be saying this if if our numbers were extremely oh, high. Oh. I'm sorry. Vice Mayor, <laughs> okay. Um, I wouldn't be saying this if our numbers were were high, like when we voted last time. But at this point, I'm I'm going to be supporting uh, removing the mask mandate. Thank okay, you. just a point a point of clarification. When you say you would like a 30 day extension, does that apply to the general populace, or are you limiting it only to city hall council meetings or or city hall employees or meetings or what? No, I would, I would, I would have that extension be for everyone. We can't just protect ourselves and not city, city the residents. Yes, it's citywide. That's the alternate motion, then, huh? Okay. Uh, any comments? Yes, Vice Mayor. Yes, I, I apologize, <laughs> Council Member Loera Diaz. That comment wasn't towards you. I was just trying to do something here at home. Anyway, I, I, uh, um, I um, understand the point of uh, Council Member Loera Diaz, and and I support it. I. Um, one of the things that I wanted to also point out is, uh, you know, the count, the, the state already lifted the mask mandate. So um, the, uh, you know, COVID it puts folks at risk. Those that are uh, those that are at risk for catching COVID are those that are not vaccinated. So I take it that those that are unvaccinated should continue to wear masks indoors. Um, so. If we are to extend it another 30 days, are you saying then, Council Member Luera Diaz, uh, up to March, um, middle of March, uh, so that we can put another um, action item on the agenda that will include lifting the mask mandate and also asking the city to find a way or a system um, to check who are vaccinated or not? Because, I, you know, in my agency, in the county, folks have to declare you know, on a confidential uh, SharePoint where it's the uh, personal health information is accessible only to certain people. Because again, it's still considered the PHI, you know, personal health information, HIPAA, et cetera. Um, of course, I know who's vaccinated or not because I review the, uh, the, the SharePoint drive. So um, it's it's uh, an HR uh, question uh, or a legal question here. And Veronica has her hand up. How are we? Uh, can we legally men ask folks tell us who's vaccinated or not and share that only with uh, you know the, those that need to know? Um, because it's actually a risk that folks are taking if they're not vaccinated. You know, I'm fully vaccinated and fully boosted, and I know that. My colleagues in the council are, are as well, are vaccinated as well. So to answer the question of the gentleman earlier, we all had to submit proof of vaccination to our HR with the city, you know, a few months ago, um, because we want to be safe. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think Veronica has her hand up. Uh, you know, you did phrase a question there, Vice Mayor. So, Ms. Neff, could you respond to that legal inquiry? I could. So at the present time, without getting into any detail from a personnel perspective, we are, as the vice mayor indicated, um, can have a process in place relative to employees. So we do have a process for knowing who is and who isn't and who should be wearing masks and who shouldn't be wearing masks. And if council will recall, we had a situation where we had, I think, three weeks of the mask mandate um, at the state level being what it is now going back to again. Unvaccinated persons must mask. Vaccin vaccinated persons need not mask. Um, we developed a protocol for addressing that issue among employees and staff within the building at that time, and the intent is to reinstitute that protocol. Okay. Vice Mayor, anything further? Yeah. Um, I want to hear what my other colleagues have to say, but for now, I would like my opinion is to follow the state guidelines on lifting the mask mandate as of February 15th. 
Okay. So unless, okay. Very nice. Uh, further comments from council? Anybody? Through the mayor, I can't, I can't see uh, anybody, so I, I can't okay. raise my hand or anything. So if you don't mind, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think we, we are definitely at that point. It's not a, a point of, oh, we're tired of it, but we're at a point where people are taking responsibility. I think that's the number one criteria is that we are all responsible for our families, for our colleagues, and um, people that we engage with on a daily level. So um, case in point, um, I attended a very robust um, sister city function at Vino Godfathers, and um, that's very tight quarters there. But before you could enter, you had to have proof of vaccination. Um, and, and masks were tossed to the wind. Some people chose to wear them, and that is their choice. Um, we have an event coming up at the Myra Theater. Um, nobody can buy a ticket to see the opera without proof of vaccination. And if they do not have one, they can watch the opera, they can buy a ticket, but they'll have to wear a mask. So I, th I think we have, have gone beyond that point, and I think we're ready to, to go back to some sort of normalcy. And our sister city, Benicia, you know, just passed, you know, uh, their, uh, their mandate so that, that they've lifted the mask mandate in Benicia. So, um, anyway, I'd like to hear from my colleagues as well. All right, Council Member Dew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, yeah, I agree. I mean, our vaccination rate um, in the city is pretty high. Um, I know countywide it's 81%, and I think it's higher than that in Vallejo. Um, and so I think that, you know, we've reached that point where um, those that are not going to get vaccinated are not going to get vaccinated and they need to wear their masks and they need to be you know socially distanced and all of that kind of stuff and i think that although we don't know whom those individuals are and when we're out you know walking in the parks or whatever um i think that it um is just you know upon us to make sure that we maintain our social distance um, whether we are wearing masks or not. Um, but I think that the time has come to remove the masks. Thank you. Anybody else on council wish to make a comment? Doesn't appear to be any. All right. Uh, yes, Council Member Buesner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I kind of like uh, Council Member Lara Diaz's hybrid um, where we keep masks um, for another 30 days and then just to figure out um, you know, it's it's easier for I think these smaller events um, to have the the ability to track people coming and going, um, whether or not they're vaccinated or if they have a, a recent COVID test that's negative. City Hall is a little more of a challenge, and um, <clears throat> I think um, I you know I know the people that haven't been vaccinated, um, you know, it's at their own risk, and they they need to wear a mask, but if they're not getting vaccinated, a lot of them, I, I've, I've seen that, and this is sort of a generalization, but it just it seems that people who aren't vaccinated don't like to wear masks either. Um, and it's, this is a public health issue. It's not about individuals. Um, and I couldn't find anything more recent than February 11th, but February 11th, the ICU, the ICU beds in Solano County were at 90, filled at 90, percent, 94 percent, 93 percent. I think it's I'm, I'm sure it's gone down by now, but it's still it, um, just a couple of weeks ago. It was pretty high. So um, I'm and I also I, I don't know. I, we also are hearing that people who are fully vaccinated and boosted, which I am one of them um, and are we are at very low risk. You know, the, the news comes out this sort of back and forth is kind of crazy making the news comes out it's like you're not vaccinated if you, you need another fourth booster but now they say that a three is fine and so my concern is you know next week there'll be some other news or there'll be another variant but um but, the, but if we take the 30 days um to figure out how we're going to deal with people coming and going to city hall um that might take care of if there's another variant coming out which seems considering what's happened already there might be so 
that, those are my comments. Thank you. Anyone further? May I have a quick question? Yes, Mr. Blum. <clears throat> so if we move towards um, the vaccination verification, uh, I believe you said we, you were gonna, we would do this and make it mandated for all city locations, or are we just talking about people who want to enter City Hall? Well, that hasn't been clarified in the form of a motion or even comments. Uh, so far, there's okay. a recommendation only in the package as to either continue or to rescind. And then there is an additional motion from Council Member Larry Diaz to continue the ban for 30 days. So that's where we are at the moment. Neither one of those addresses City Hall independently of citywide. Oh. So, Mr. Mayor, if I may uh, weigh in for a moment, if you don't mind. Yeah, certainly. Um, I, I do have some concern about um, requiring a mandated vaccination for attendance as opposed to a mandated verification of whether someone must or must not wear a mask. So um, adding an additional requirement to participate in city hall activities, redress your government, um, come before the city to speak, um, that is not a requirement citywide to enter other buildings does cause me some concern. I think if we, the, the better course of action might be to use the same verification method for the public entering city hall that we use for staff entering city hall. Um, and that would be something that we could do administratively um, for individuals entering city hall, unless you want to keep the mask mandate in place citywide, which you could still do if you determine that it is necessary under the emergency conditions. So I, I I think the choices that I would recommend are either lift the mask mandate and let the state take care of it, vaccinated, unmasked, unvaccinated, masked, or if you are to address an issue specific to City Hall, then it would be a verification of the mask wearing along the lines of what we are doing with city staff. Thank you for those comments and those observations. Mr. Malone, anything further? <clears throat> no, I'm gonna wait for you guys to vote on the item and we'll see where we land. Okay, well, we, we will entertain the uh, alternate motion from Council Member Luria Diaz first, which is to continue the mass ordinance as stated presently for an additional 30 days. The main motion will be to terminate it. So we will proceed to the vote on the alternate motion first to terminate, uh, to extend for 30 days. Is that clear to everybody? Yes, uh, you say. Vice Mayor? Yeah, so 30 days meaning um, until March 22, which is, that's uh, our next well, meeting. 28, right? days, 28 days in February, so it'd be to uh, March 24th, actually. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that the dates are e easy to remember for staff and for the public. So I'm, let's see, March 22 is our next uh, meeting, actually. Am I correct? Uh, is that instead of March, March 24? March 8 is our next meeting. Right, right. Oh, that's right. But our meeting on the week of the 20th is March 22. Yes. So yes. the 30 days would mean March 24. So is that what you're looking at then, uh, Council Member Luera Diaz? I think that that's what you meant, correct? 30 that, days. That is, that is what I meant. Thank you. Okay. 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 So the motion, the alternate motion is to continue the math ordinance for the city of Vallejo to March 24th, 2022. Everybody's clear on that? And then Lorea. one more question. Council Member Luera Diaz. Uh -huh. I, I'd like to. You're frozen again. Okay. Clarify something. So my motion was issued if, if that's the route we're going to take to just extend it another 30 days and then have this vote again is not what I had in mind. Otherwise, I, I'll just remove my motion and then we'll just vote on, on what we have right now. Okay, okay well, re re rephrase your motion the way you want it to be. 
You know, after listening to our city attorney, um, I'm not sure if, if the way motion is going to, to be um, cause of problems. I mean, Veronica, do you want to elaborate a little bit more of what, what you said earlier? I just want to make, be clear on this. Well, I, I think I'd almost have to ask some questions, which I'm yes. trying to do. I think if um, Council Member Diaz, what you are after is a question of how to address the public entering City Hall um, and whether we have verified their vaccination status in order to verify whether they should or shouldn't be wearing masks. Um, then one way to go about that would be to say, if you, unless you have verified, unless you have proven you are vaccinated, we are assuming you are not and you must have a mask on. And we can delineate the way for lack of a better word, I suppose schools do. It, once you've shown your verification, you are, you know, cleared to come into the building not wearing a mask. How we determine people coming in who take it off when they're inside is a little bit more of a problem. And I don't know if we do that by, you know, wristbands or other identification of people who have shown um, their status. Uh, to a confidential person at the door or have entered into a, there is an app um, that the courts are using, that the federal courts are using right now called Clear, where you enter your vaccination status into Clear and you will receive a QR code. And that QR code indicates whether you are vaccinated or not vaccinated. Um, so there are electronic means by which we can verify without having somebody show us their uh, for lack of a better word, card, et cetera, or chase them for their cards. Um, but if you're suggesting that we continue the mask mandate until we can do that um, and, and stack up some form of verification, um, then I think that's one thing. Um, if you are suggesting that you want us to, I'm not sure, um, come up with a mandate for people to be vaccinated in order inter to enter City Hall. As I previously stated, I, I do have some concerns about um, making a requirement for the entering of City Hall and attending a council meeting that isn't a requirement for entering any other building within the city. Right. I'm not, I'm not addressing a mandate for vaccinations, although I do think that employees for the city should be vaccinated, including the police department and everybody else that works there because they have constant contact. So that, that's not what I'm addressing that perhaps we can address later. So at this moment, I'm going to remove my motion and um, I, I will just have us vote on what's on the table on, you know, whether we continue it or not. It just seems a little bit too complicated. I, it, it made sense in my eyes to extend it another 30 days to give us enough time. But after listening to you, um, Veronica, it just seems like it's, it's it's going to cause all sorts of issues and open all these different doors that I, I really don't want open. So I remove my motion and um, I ask that we vote on what's presented by staff. Okay, well, may I, I'd like to remind that what is, you know, that what is presented by staff <clears throat> are two different recommendations. There's not a resolution from staff. There are two separate and distinct recommendations. So we need to decide which one we want to adapt, adopt. Um, but to Ms. Nab, I do have one additional noticing concern. And that is <clears throat> the agenda reads to can either one, continue to enforce the order requiring the wearing of fa face coverings in doors, indoors and in and out and enclosed public spaces, which I have presumed to be within the entire city of Vallejo, yes. or adopt a resolution require um, rescinding resolution number 21-100, yes. which is also within the city limits. We haven't, there's nothing in the agenda to say, we're going to do something different with city hall. So my concern is, can we do something separate with city hall, despite the language of the agenda? So, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I think, and, and the answer is, um, you probably can't, but we can administratively, the city manager can administratively determine a way to verify mask status by vaccination status for people entering the building. 
which is a state law. If you rescind, it defaults to state law. State law says if you are not vaccinated, you must be wearing a mask. The question then becomes administratively, do we try to verify that or adopt a system administratively to verify that for people entering City Hall? And do the directions to have an administrative adoption of such a requirement have to be set forth in the motion or can they be omitted and understood to have the city manager possess that authority? I think the city manager possesses that authority inherently in his administrative powers for adopting an administrative procedure for city hall. Oh. Um, but I, if council is of a mind to address oh. this issue, I don't think it's, I don't think it, you are correct. It is not delineated for the council to address on the agenda this evening. Okay, then let, if I if I may, as chair, uh, I will propose the following resolution. Uh, to adopt a resolution rescinding resolution number 21-100, terminating the order citywide with the understanding that the city manager, pursuant to his administrative powers, can adopt a specific regulation for those entering City Hall. That okay, Ms. Neb? Yes. Good. Anybody have any other uh, alternative motions or requests for change in the language? Nope. Okay, then let's take the uh, roll on that motion as presented. Mr. Mayor, before you take the roll call, we had a citizen raise their hand after oh. the time was over. Do you want to take the speaker or not? Yeah, let's take them by all means. Okay. Kelly De Silva, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much for taking uh, my call. I emailed today. I would just like to say that in the last meeting, I believe you guys had said that should the vaccination rate get to be over 80%, that you would most likely rescind the mask order. And we are at 88%. You have the Solano County uh, dashboard on your website and Vallejo is at 88%. Um, I would also like to say that every mask I've purchased says it does not guard against viruses. So I don't believe the masks are working. Um, our cases are coming down, deaths, are coming down. We actually, with all the cases we've had in the county, 99.99% um, .99 of the people have survived COVID. Um, obviously, it is a tragedy when anybody dies. I don't mean to make light of that, but this is a virus. It's not going away. Um, it's being transmitted, mask or no mask. I think you all probably know people who've been vaccinated that have still gotten COVID. So it's not going away. So I don't feel that this is helping at all. And I would like to ask that you look at the numbers and make a decision based on that, not on how you feel or what you think is best. And certainly we don't need to go in the direction of a vaccination tracking system. This, that is, Orwellian. So thank you for listening. Appreciate it very much. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Zelda. Everyone clear on the resolution? If so, let's proceed to the vote. Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Verdura Liga. Yes. Council members Ardiola. Aye. Brown. Yes. Do. Yes. Loretta Diaz. Yes. Mayor. Yes. Mayor McConnell. Aye. Motion carries unanimously.